Yeah, and then in between that, I actually managed to watch a lot of Netflix this weekend. How? Um, you were back to <laughs> busy. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me your no, secret. No, no, when did you get tired? <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Sherlux Team podcast with me, Georgina Blasky. Today I'm joined by Sherry Andrew, Nana Achiempong, and Vanessa Menrad. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. Very exciting. I'm good. I'm in the hot seat for the first time hosting the podcast. So um, you're in safe hands. (laughs) So, yeah, it's exciting. Um, I'm very happy to be here and I'm happy to be here with all of you. So, as usual, let's kick off. How was your weekend? Vanessa, yeah. tell me. Yeah, it was really good. It was once again one of those where I was like, oh, I have nothing on, I'll chill. And then it ended up being quite busy. Mm. <laughs> um, one of those. Classic. Same as mine. Yeah. It's always like that, isn't <laughs> it? I had, way. yeah, literally, I had a mm-hmm. reunion party on Friday with my uh, old colleagues. Don't tell anyone here. <laughs> no. <laughs> nice. no, it was really nice. It was really, really lovely seeing everyone. And then on, uh, on Saturday, I started off slightly hungover, but then uh, I recovered quite quickly. I was quite proud of that. And I went to see um, a little gallery in Notting Hill. It was actually on last week's What to Do This Weekend. It was the one that's called Blush Upon a Cheek. Um, oh, yeah, really cool. small gallery, but beautiful, beautiful artwork. There was especially, there was this one thing. It's a candle holder in form of a silver ribbon. And I just, fe- I fell Ooh, in love with it. It's wow. so, so stunning. Oh, so yeah. nice. But yeah, really, really lovely exhibition. And it there, there was, there was an... Um, there was an essay, I don't know who wrote it, but she had it like laid out in the gallery. And it was talking about how like in the 17th century, like if you had a natural blush on your cheek, it was like supposed to be this like innocent, beautiful thing. Whereas if you like put blush on, yeah. it would become this like, almost like slutty thing, you know? Yeah. And yeah. It, she didn't use the word yeah. slutty. What yeah. was the 17th century? Yeah, yeah. it was like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah you were, you know, not innocent anymore which is really which is really funny because like oh so if it's natural then it's uh, cute and innocent but if you put it on then you're suddenly uh it's mm. like it's a bit gaudy or yeah exactly yeah, yeah yeah and i thought that was really interesting i actually took the essay home with me i was gonna bring it in and i forgot yeah. so oh. here we are <laughs> i'll bring it in tomorrow and i put it somewhere for people because i thought it was really interesting but yeah, yeah so we did that and then afterwards we went to chelsea um to another gallery um sachi gallery but um i wasn't that into the exhibition there it was a bit I'm actually just gonna read this off because there's two exhibitions one was called the way of all flesh that was the one I wasn't too into just because it was quite like graphic Mm -hmm. like it was quite intense and I was a bit like you know when you're just not ready for that sort of art I think like it it was probably a really good exhibition but it was just wasn't for me um and then the other one was a very small one called studio response where some new artists were exhibiting some of their bits and bobs and that was actually quite nice there was a wall full of these like prints with different funny quotes on them which which was nice but yeah it was lovely and then afterwards we went to cafe kids kitsune and i'm not gonna lie we went there for the aesthetics it's all for the gram isn't it it was it was (laughs) it it was not for the (laughs) it was really beautiful but you know it was really disappointing because i got there and i ordered my six pound chai latte six pounds six pounds and i got the cup and the cup didn't have the label on it it was just a plain white cup Six pound, that is a lot. I know. Was it a good cup at least? No, it was just a normal lattice sized cup. Was it nice mm. and hot? Did it taste good? Was well, it, and is that's it the best the, chai you've ever no, had. No, this is the next thing. You know, there's, there's like two types of chais there's like the spicy ones and the yeah. sweet ones. Mm. I like the sweet ones. Yeah. This was yeah. the spicy ones. Okay. So it might, it might be amazing, but for me, it just, it was a, it was a big miss. Oh, I don't know. I was really yeah. upset that I didn't get the, I don't know, that sounds so ridiculous, but I was maybe, like, oh. maybe you're a little bit sensitive with the hangover too. Yeah. Like sometimes these things, they can just, yeah, <laughs> my friend had a Spanish latte and she really enjoyed that. You know a the Spanish one with latte? yeah, it's like oh, with okay. condensed milk instead oh, of nice. it's very sweet. But Ooh. if you like sweet, yeah, that's a yeah, it's latte. it's very indul- okay. indulgent, but so nice. really lovely. But yeah, so that was that, and then we went home and made um, vodka pasta, which I hadn't made before. Mm. It's oh, absolutely yeah. delicious. That is really good. Yeah, yeah. Made that. so very wholesome Saturday, and on Sunday I just went to the cinema to see anyone but you, which I loved. Did you? Yeah. I've heard good things. Yeah, really, really, really good fun. I'm not usually one for the like really like rom com movies, but this one was hilarious. I laughed mm. a lot. Um, so who's in that? Sydney Sweeney <laughs> and Glenn Powell. And um, 
a few other very attractive uh, cast members. Everyone was very hot, <laughs> I have to say. I was like, there was, um, <laughs> her, her sister is marrying a girl in the movie plot and her brother was also very hot and he was really funny as well. There's a scene where he talks to a koala and it's just the funniest thing. Um, it's just a fun movie. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it's, it's, it's a fun movie. Yeah, it's yeah. a very fun movie. I enjoyed it um, and lovely to look at. Yeah, <laughs> love that. Cinema on a Sunday as well. That's like... I know, right? Yeah, that's like Peak Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. 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 Either yeah. that or a roast dinner are like my two tick boxes. Or both. Yes. Yeah. For a Sunday. Do both. Just yeah. do it all. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was very lovely. Very lovely weekend. So nice. So nice. So nice. And Anna, what about you? Um, uh, much like Vanessa said on Friday, everyone was like, what are you doing in the weekend? I was like, nothing. I was like, it's really chill. So like, February's going to be really busy, so I don't want to do anything. And obviously, it was the complete opposite <laughs> of that. Um, don't know how I forgot, but it's one of my really, really good friends. It was her 40th birthday, so we had a meal booked at a restaurant called Slow Burn on Black Horse Road, oh, which nice. was actually a restaurant in a denim atelier. So Ooh, we were surrounded. I saw this on your story. I yeah, did wonder. I was so like, cool. how does that work? Yeah, it was, honestly, it was amazing. So you kind of walk in and there's just like worktops and like sewing machines and everything everywhere. And then you walk to the back of the restaurant and they've set up tables and got rid of kind of like all of the denim stuff. And then they've got a kitchen. And wow. The food was delicious. The service was amazing. And yeah, you're just, it's a really cool kind of setup um, to be having dinner in. So that was Friday night. So that is was... that like a private space that you booked and it was no, just there you were, no, anyone no, can book any, and anyone, there. anyone can book. So there were lots of other tables. We just had a long table. There was 14 of us. We just had like one big long table, mm -hmm. but there were probably about eight other tables, I'd say, eight or nine other okay. tables. And it's not too big. In the restaurant or mm. factory or... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what was the food? Oh, so East London, um, uh, The food was, it was all sharing plates. So um, a lot of meat, a lot of fish. Yeah. Um, we're just kind of like really delicious sides, like fried cauliflower and really nicely done sweet potato and tipsy mm. cabbage and so yeah, cool. it was really, you know, really delicious. So nice. Yeah, so that was Friday night. Saturday, I ended up um, inadvertently went and did normal Saturday exercise class stuff like that, and then I was like, oh, I just need to pop into town quickly. Popping into town, turned <laughs> into a, yeah, exactly. <laughs> turned into a full day of shopping. Yeah. So I was like, oh, maybe I'll just check this shop out. And I checked. So I went to Selfridges, <laughs> went to Zara, <laughs> went to another stories. Like, yeah, just kind of had a day shopping. Did you buy anything? Um, do you know what? I'm actually I'm presenting the show this week. Um, so I bought a new Ooh. Oh, so I say, uh, yeah, have to watch exactly. This. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We um, don't worry. Don't yeah. need to out your outfit now. Exactly. No spoilers here. But yeah, um, so that was like the one thing that I bought. And then on the way home, bumped into a friend on the tube who had actually got a package from me from Bista Village from before Christmas because oh, wow. I was I was away. <laughs> I was away for New Year, had ordered something from Vista. It had got dropped off at like the local news agent. So I was like, please, can, I was like, I need someone in Leytonstone that can pick this up. <laughs> and she was so sweet um, that she got it for me. So it's actually been at her house since like Boxing Day or something. Um, so I went and picked that up some nice YSL shoes that I got oh. in Vista that are bright yellow that I'm obsessed with. Um, so yeah, I was actually just wearing them around the house yesterday <laughs> <laughs> for like fun. Trying out my new YSL heels. Mm. Um, and then yesterday I went to this amazing event called Beats and Bands, which was at a place called the Alternate um, in Tottenham Court Road, which is basically, it's like a nightclub slash event space. Um, and it was um, a fitness influencer called Just Jean who has basically put together this event that is exercise but also kind of like a mini nightclub situation so you've got DJs Ooh. You've got performances and honestly my bum today and glutes <laughs> and thighs and everything. So you've got the bands on and it's an hour class to like really great music. Um, so it's so like, fun. yeah, three yeah. to eight yeah. and then you get to have food and drink and everything afterwards. So. Three to eight, so it's a whole day of yeah, like yeah. different classes and, and stuff. Yeah. Yes, oh my so gosh, I what are you your heart rate was up. Yeah. For how long? Yeah. That's five hours of... 
So it's not, you're not exercising the whole time. I'd say the actual class is probably about an hour and a half and then the rest of it is, she's kind of doing like games and competitions and... and that sounds like so that. far. So, yeah, no, it's really, really good. And the music's mm. great and the energy. And I'd say, I think the venue holds like 3,000 people, so... Oh, oh wow. It, it's big venue. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, so have you seen the restaurant tattoo? Have you been there? Yeah. No, I haven't been there, okay. but I, I've you been to this uh, venue yeah, before. Been yeah. It, yeah, so you know how like big it because yeah. like, there's people on the floor doing it. It's like a massive floor space, and then there's people. Oh, like a the... mezzanine. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. We've got like a theatre. Yeah. Just yeah. for workout. Yeah. Yeah. Just for like workout. Um, That's really cool. Yeah, and then in between that, I actually managed to watch a lot of Netflix this weekend. How? Um, you were back to <laughs> busy. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, tell me your no, no, when did you get tired? <laughs> so yeah, after the fitness thing, it was time to go home and do some food prep for the rest of the week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was me. That was so nice. So, so I think that was kind of like the cultural recommendation. Yeah. Yeah. All in there. Sherry, um, what yeah. have you got? Well, <laughs> my oh, timing can How can I top this? Oh, pressure. To be fair, I had a really nice weekend as well. I was in Bristol seeing my best oh, friend, oh. Um, which was so nice. We always say that we have like a long distance relationship, oh. just like voice note constantly because <laughs> yeah. we don't live in the same city. Um, but she's getting married in the summer, oh. which is exciting. Um, and I'm a bridesmaid. So we had lots of like wedding prep to do. Yeah. And I was just asking her every single detail, like what are you doing for your hair, your nails, like yeah. all the... Because I feel like sometimes when you get married, people think that they can't talk about all the details all the time with everyone, yeah. which I get. But I was like, no, with me, I want to know everything. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. So sweet. it was really nice. Yeah, it's been a lot of catching up to do. And then on the Saturday, we went to Joe Malone and Bath. I never realised how close Bristol and Bath are together. It's like less than 15 minutes on the train. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Really? That yeah, close? Yeah, that yeah. close. You wow. can do like two in the weekend if you want yeah, to. Yeah, I, re- I went to um, Babington House and... Mm-hmm. Um, the other week and I didn't realise how mm. close Bath is to London, just like on the train. It's only like an it hour really and is. Yeah. yeah, and Bath is so it's nice. Yeah. 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 It's so beautiful. It's very like Bridgerton Core, the yeah. architecture. Yeah. yeah. Really the cool stone, that it's all the same stone. It just yeah. like fascinates me so much. Mm. And all those beautiful like curved crescents yeah. and it's just perfect. Yeah, it's very aesthetic. Yeah. Um actually someone was getting married in the Abbey there. And I was like, oh, oh this is wow. fun. Ooh, just fancy. saw someone getting married. But we were there to go to the Joe Malone store to do her wedding fragrance experience. Oh, it's really I good. I didn't and, know that they did that. Yeah, actually, you can like sit down in the store with like your bridesmaids or your mum or whoever, yeah. and they just show you all the different scents, and then you choose one that you're gonna wear oh on your God, wedding I day. Know, like, honestly, weddings just make so me cry. nice. Mm. Like, I know it was yeah. Weddings, I'm like, oh. Yeah, it's, it was very much. Um, amazing. So yeah, you're supposed to wear it on like your wedding, your Hindu, and then like on your anniversary as well because oh. yeah, it's, so smell is like so evocative. Yeah, so, so every yeah. time if you spray that, you like right. yeah. 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 take mm. them right back to that day. Yeah, exactly. Oh, so it was so mm, adorable. I and love that. It was so nice. And it was really interesting. She was telling us a lot about like how the fragrances are made, just like perfumes in general. And she was like, you have yeah. to spray it on your skin and then go outside and then smell it because yeah. it smells different when you're outside mm. which is good to know if you're having an outdoor wedding yeah. um <laughs> so yeah that was a really nice experience yeah. and then on the sunday we went to this new restaurant in the clifton area which is lovely it was called one york place and it was so nice it was a really beautiful restaurant it's really small they kind of do like share it's kind of like modern european mm. um but lots of small sharing plates we had like some scallops, some prawns. Um, we had some nudie with like sage and butter, which is like my favorite combination oh, ever. Oh, that sounds delicious. Um, and butternut squash, that was really nice. Mm-hmm. We had um, some hake as well to share. It was just like a really nice vibe. So if you want like a lovely restaurant that's really relaxed. I feel like going out for, d- for lunch on a Sunday is like my favorite thing. Yeah, it's the, the best. Yeah, by the evening I'm like, oh, Sunday's scary. So I just like <laughs> yeah. make it feel a bit longer. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was very wholesome. Lots of girl time, which I is my favorite thing ever. So Aww, yeah, it was really nice. Love it. And what about you, Georgina? What did yeah. you get up to? I went to an exhibition on Saturday called Cute. Which oh is my gosh, oh, yeah. nice. I've been invited to this. Oh you my should God. Go <laughs> it was like, there's no other word. Yeah. It was really cute. Yeah. You walk in, <laughs> And you just, you go into this room and it's completely pink. And it's got these pictures from kind of like Victorian times going towards Art Deco of how um, cuteness was beginning to infiltrate culture and art and things. And so they'll have these like cherubs and how that then evolved into the sort of um, 
Hello Kitty style of cute and it's mm-hmm. 50 years yeah. of Hello Kitty 50 year anniversary this year which I wow. think has been quite a driving force behind the exhibition uh-huh, okay. so then you walk in and there's you walk through this big arch that is shaped like Hello Kitty's head mm-hmm. with the ears and then you go in and there's just Hello Kitty toys <laughs> oh my God. all around oh my God. the room I mean Sounds like amazing. you've got to have your phone out the whole time there's yeah. just so much to take photos of then you go into another room, which is like you're inside a disco ball with a disco ball and a DJ booth, which is Hello Kitty's DJ booth. Like it's so kitsch and, and bizarre. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was just really interesting because all the all the sort of information they had as you go around talks about why are we attracted to cuteness and why does why do we need a bit of cuteness? And it was making me think about those Snapchat filters with the ears mm-hmm, and the little yeah. kitten nose oh gosh, and yeah. all those things because Puppies when the world yeah. feels a bit heavy or whatever, I mean how many people were using that in the pandemic? Yeah. Things like that. And I just think, yeah, it's that idea of it's an antidote to the mm. stress and strain of modern life mm-hmm. and also adulthood because it kind of takes you back to Yeah, I was thinking of taking my niece hood. who's fourteen. So mm. you definitely could yeah. I think younger kids too there were little kids there so when it got a little bit off the main kind of cute vibe and went into slightly you could definitely like that would go over their heads and yeah like heavy mm. and it wasn't too much it yeah was just sort of there but also I feel um, like for 14 years old I think it's yeah fine. but yeah. I think you could even take a six-year-old and they yeah, would just yeah. dance around the yeah. head yeah. Like yeah. 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 I have my party like best room yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. um so that was really, really good. And then we just walked up to Common Garden. And I actually, for the first time, walked into the Nomad Hotel. Oh, oh, oh it's so yeah. nice. And that really beautiful nice atrium mm. dining room mm. and area. So we went and had a drink there. And oh, then we just went home. And it was great because I was like home at seven, but it was already dark. So I felt like I knew yeah. that all night. Mm. Mm. <laughs> the best. Yeah, that's the good thing about this time of year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. agreed. Really good. Um, and then I did do an exercise thing similar, not, well, Maybe a bit similar to what you did. In that it yeah. was an experience yeah. rather than a class. Yeah. So there's something called Sanctum and the I think the Instagram is We Are Sanctum. And you go um into a church and you put on headphones like you're at Silent oh, Disco. Silent Disco. Ooh. And the guys at the front everyone has a yoga mat and it's kind of mindful mm-hmm. movement to change the frequency in your body and your energy and to connect with your feelings and to breathe in a way that creates a lot there's a lot of breathing so almost you get a kind of mental euphoria happening Mm -hmm. as you're connecting to these emotions which you're normally maybe squashing or repressing Mm -hmm. in day-to-day life anyway I thought it was going to be a bit of kind of tai chi with a bit of yoga and sort of like (laughs) this sort of movement and in the end it was (laughs) It was like a hit class oh, for an oh, hour. Wow. <laughs> and the breathing was insane. I thought, like, I, I mean, it was like an out-of-body experience. So wow. I set my intention and halfway through, I had pulled a muscle in my car. Oh, no. And I was like, oh, my God. I'm never going to make it to the end of this <laughs> mindful movement experience. Anyway, I did manage to get to the end. Um, and it was actually really, really good. Yeah. Um, and, you, and it was in a church in Camden. So you're right. They clear away oh, all the gosh. benches and you're in this incredible building there's obviously stained glass around and mm-hmm. carvings and um this guy luke was was talking and you know through the headphones he's giving you like constantly talking to you the whole yeah. time and the music sort of brings you up and down mm. and up again um so it's very very cool That's very so different really cool. and yeah. way yeah. more of mm. work out than i was <laughs> yeah. expecting um <laughs> So, yeah. It's so much nicer though doing it in a big group, isn't it? Than just by yourself doing your workout. Definitely. I prefer it. Yeah. Mm. I, yeah. Do, I do like those types of workouts, yeah. definitely. Mm-hmm. I know. And I think we sort of got used to doing things at home and doing it on a little screen, but actually, you're All the so COVID right. workouts. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And it was such, it was so, it, like, it just brings a whole other level of energy. Mm. I think you really up your game when yeah. you're yeah. in a group. Yeah. Mm. yeah, I'm scared yeah. of being embarrassed, like that I don't do well enough, so I try extra <laughs> hard. Really I'm literally yeah. like, oh god, I can't stop now. <laughs> Everybody's gonna Everyone's think I'm weak. <laughs> so true. That's what spurs people on, though. Yeah, yeah. but it's interesting yeah. how these like almost like the classes are now like it's not just enough to go to like a Pilates. It's like this like amazing event, which I really like. Yeah, I really I think upping it. What like just June, what she's done is built this amazing community. Like mm. all of these women that obviously love to exercise also love music Mm -hmm. and just like kind of want to be together and it was just so nice like I met so many people that I didn't even know were going to be there and I was like oh you're here and you're here and 
yeah, it's just lovely. Mm-hmm. So I think they're really like fun events to yeah. be able to be a part of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. much yeah, better than going to the gym on your own. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's an afternoon of like just fun then. And you're yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, I've exercised, but also I had a really good time as well. Instead mm. of like you say, just going to a class. Yeah, yeah. I think, own, mm-hmm. and I an think hour. You, mm. you kind of the the benefit lingers for yeah. much longer. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. after this this class. I felt I did feel quite fizzy in my body for yeah. about forty eight hours. Actually, <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh my god, two days! I know. I came in the, like the next day into the office, and I was like, "Yep, still fizzing." Still <laughs> that know, frequency like, is still vibrating yeah. somewhere. Oh wow! Still, but... Yeah, it was. It was quite weird actually yeah. in that way. So even if you're a bit skeptical, I do think that sometimes yeah, you mm-hmm. just give it a go. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm desperate to know what you've all been watching over the weekend but I am going to jump in first I watched <laughs> the final of Traitors and obviously we've all been watching it for has it been three weeks four weeks it mm-hmm. feels like quite it's been a lifetime Vanessa you watched it too yes well I watched the final and like I was like the whole episode I was like shaking I was literally I said for the two like oh my god oh my god Who oh my god backing? I thought I honestly thought as um is it jazz mm. jazz as he was saying about harry and when it was just the three of them i was like and you know she said she was gonna change her name and i she was like wrote an h yeah yeah I, and I, I was i i was literally like please don't don't trust it. like you must know at this point because why else would he want to re-vote like yeah. if he knew he was a traitor he wouldn't want to re like it yeah. was so stupid and i was just oh, like and then i was really disappointed that there was no like like it was such a like um anti-climax of like he won, she runs out, and then they just leave and they just have a glass of champagne and then it's over. And I was like, wait, wait what? Yeah. But that's when you switch to um, BBC Two and see oh, the traitors I do, I do. uncloaked. <laughs> <laughs> they were all there. <laughs> and then they went into it because they actually filmed the whole oh, thing okay, last okay, summer, okay. So then they actually went... Because I really know, like, I wanted to know whether, whether their friendship was still going up. Because, you know, she said, if you're a traitor, I'll never speak to you <laughs> again. And obviously oh, he was a traitor. <laughs> took it so I mean, personally, don't they? They yeah. do. But by the end, Fair they enough. were playing for like 96 I grand. I mean, so you got to start money. taking that yeah. money. True. I think he played, I mean, Good the game, game of his life. It was brilliant the way yeah. he executed it. So hats off to Harry. But, yeah. oh my... God, he did. He money. did do well. Yeah, he did, I did so well. The romantic in me really wanted um, him to be like, "Let's share the money." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, Imagine. that wasn't happen. gonna yeah, happen. Not, yeah. But how cute would it? Imagine. Been? Well, that would I, have been I, cute. I mean, I'm totally with you. I was really like, "Oh, Molly, how can you get it wrong? It's so obvious." But I think <laughs> if you if you're in that in scenario, it. yeah, we know more different. than they know. And also, she trusted him like a brother, yeah. she, and yeah. she whispered to him. It's not you, and he was like, "No, it's not me." Oh, yeah. She was so nervous as well. Okay, like isn't it? She's gonna lie. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's so day. hard. But, mm. How can you build a friendship after that? You, I know it's a game, but it's like yeah. I don't think they're gonna be friends because like she had him lying to her this whole show yeah, without think. like flinching. Once. Mm. Like it, you know, yeah. like, I don't think I could be friends with him afterwards. I know, like, and you think like, yeah, you you've kind of be lying to me betraying me the whole time so yeah. how can I ever trust anything you say mm. well, I, I... someone who lies so easily <laughs> so yes. so far there's been two ser- two seasons first mm-hmm. season the faithfuls one second season the traitor one It'll be interesting to know what happens yeah. next I know I like that it's picking up momentum I actually didn't watch the second series but I've seen so many spoilers I'm like yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what's happened watch, yeah. I've watched like the first <laughs> three or four episodes mm-hmm. of series two mm-hmm. and then I've been busy, but again, because everyone's talking about yeah. it constantly, yeah. either in the office or on social, or you'll read like yeah. a paper, whatever. So you can't yeah, escape I it. I feel like I know everything mm. about mm. the whole show. I feel like <laughs> for January. <laughs> Thanks, <as well>. guys. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm joking. It's fine. You can't escape. <laughs> um, it sort of got me through January. Yeah, you know mm. that was something on to look forward to. Yeah, yeah. January's over. Traitors is over. Days getting that longer. That is so true. Yeah. Yeah. Been that now. Mm. Um, um, yeah but yeah third series these are like the game shows i actually want to see this is why i'm not watching love island because i'm like it's the same thing every single year yeah. whereas this is fresh it's exciting like you don't have to be any type of person to be on it it's just like normal people playing yeah. a good game so yeah maybe I'll, is it worth watching it if you know what happens though i don't do you think so. yeah now that no, like no. Th- now that you know who it was i feel like it's not really because okay i'll wait for series three suspense. yeah, yeah. God. and every episode things do turn yeah. on their head. Yeah. Like every episode, there's a bit of a, oh yeah. my God. And they manipulate in terms of how they 
you know, choose people mm-hmm. and get rid of people and everything else. And then the producers come in and throw a curveball at times <laughs> as well. So I feel if you don't have that um, unpredictability yeah, to watch it, be, to know the end, no point. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, fair. Yeah. Well, if we're series three. I Ooh. reckon you should watch Love Island. I you should be enjoying it, Vanessa. All stars, yeah. Oh, <laughs> I'm loving it. It is very different from the normal Love Island because it's like they all already know each other and they're like each other's exes and like yeah. it brings a whole other layer to it. And also at this point, I'm going to need like a... We, we've been considering this as a household to like make a board of who's getting with who, who's gotten with who before and who's been together before. Because I kid you not, <laughs> like every rough. episode, yeah. they swap through the... Like I, there is not a single couple. It's been like two weeks. There's not a single couple that's like actually like been a yeah. couple. Oh, really? Yeah. They just constant... And then a new ex walks in and then they're like, oh, it's like ex on the beach. That's yeah. <laughs> That's the vibe. Yeah, it's it like they've just made X on the beach, basically. Yeah, it, it, it is ITV literally style. the vibe, yeah. but it is. Mm. I think it's hilarious. Like we we laugh a lot uh, about the show. But what I like to know though is if they're gonna do a Casa Amor, because obviously, oh, okay. how many people are they gonna bring in? And like, yeah. I don't know. But yeah, I I enjoy it a lot, and I like every time a bombshell comes in, you're like, oh my god, who's it gonna be? Because mm-hmm. obviously, you know everyone. Um, I mean, I didn't watch all the seasons, but so far I got lucky. Like all the people that are in the seasons I watched. So, okay. do you think yeah. it's better having like being familiar with the cast? I think it's better. I think it's so much better because mm. from from episode one, fun stuff was happening. I mean, they are ridiculous. Like there's like constantly people making out with each other left, right, and center. Like it's just <laughs> it's it's like normal Love Island on steroids. Do you think they're more free because they've been there before? Yeah, they're yeah. Just like, they're oh, so I like care. they're so relaxed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Mm. I and wish the, to give it another go. Yeah. I only watched the first episode and I was like, no. Nah, <laughs> but it yeah. obviously got I good. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know. I just, I, I really like it. I think the producers as well because they already know the, the people. They mm. know exactly how to like trigger people like into like doing things. Like yeah. you can tell it's like very well orchestrated as a show. Um, but yeah, I'm enjoying it. Mm. Yeah. Oh, Nana, good. Have you been watching anything you'd like to recommend? I have um, two things. One Griselda, which is on Netflix, mm-hmm. and every um, billboard I feel like, at yeah, the as well. um, Sophia the girl mm-hmm. from Modern Family, yeah. she is playing a godmother. Um, it's by the people that made Narcos, if anyone watched oh. that Ooh. on Netflix. Oh my goodness, yeah. I only finished that recently, but oh, really? oh, so my yeah. god, so good, <laughs> so good. Um, so, yeah, it's the same people that made Narcos. Oh, nice. Um, she based on a true story, she was a real drug lord. Uh, based in Miami in the 70s and it's honestly every episode I was like I need to go to bed <laughs> it's one of those <laughs> and you're like I need to go to bed and then I'm like oh just one more and I'm like I'll finish it so yeah mm. I watched that the whole I think there's eight episodes mm-hmm. so I managed to squeeze that in well, that's quite wow. good yeah. yeah yeah exactly um really really good and then another one that I'm watching um a show called Criminal Record on mm. Apple TV. Oh, is this new? Just yeah. started. Yeah, I want to yeah. watch this. So that's mm. only four episodes in, but Apple TV, I always forget. They do weekly, like it's released yeah. once you a have week to wait. rather mm. than like you can just binge it all at once. Like which, in the good old times. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, yeah. like the olden days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really enjoying it. So yeah, episode four came out this week. So I caught up on that. Mm. And um, Lady Called Kush who used to be in The Good Wife, which was another show that I loved. Yeah. Really just a gripping kind of like British crime story. Um, if people like, mm. like Slow Horses and shows I like love Slow yeah. Horses. Um, okay. Yeah, you're definitely going to love Criminal Record as okay. well. Okay. Oh, I need to I'm watch both of those. Yeah. They're, they're at my they're, street. They're my recommendations. Hmm. Sherry? Um, Not that you were sat in front of the TV much this weekend. No, <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a podcast girl. I'm in my podcast yeah. era. Well, yeah. I've always been, but even more so now. But I've got one to recommend, which yeah. is very off piece for me. It's called The Upshot, and it's actually a football podcast. What? Which I know, but bear with me. So <laughs> honestly, <laughs> who would have thought? Yes, yeah. Like, what? But they get so it's a group of journalists, and they just go through all of like the the, the biggest stars across football. Actually, it's not just football; it's like sports as well. Mm. And they talk about the stuff that doesn't necessarily make it into the headlines. For example, when the David Beckham documentary came out on Netflix, they did an episode, and they were like, "Let's talk about all of his controversies that he didn't talk about." Yeah, it doesn't make it yeah. Mean. So it's very much like you know celebrity gossip, mm-hmm. but it is really interesting because there's people like Maradona, Pele, like these 
these big football stars that I literally knew nothing about. And I'm like, oh, okay. So he had five wives and <laughs> they were together and this happened off the pitch. Just learning, like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So oh, a bit that. different for me, but it's really entertaining. The guys who present it are really funny. Yeah. Um, but in terms of watching, yeah, I just finished, finished Slow Horses season three, right. I think. Yeah. It's so good. Gary Oldman, I think, is just the best actor ever. Oh, yeah, he's amazing. just incredible. So good. Um, but yeah, I need to. I mean, I'm adding those two to my list. Yeah. Oh, no, but so yeah, I need some more reps. Yeah, if you've just finished Narcos, you're really going to enjoy Griselda. Yes. Like. Oh my God. But things like that are so violent. I'm always like, oh, yeah. my life is so sheltered. And then you're watching like <laughs> things that happen in real life. I'm like, oh my God. But it is good TV though. Is it also like the whole 70s styling? Yeah, that's it. Like the clothes were amazing. The soundtrack's really mm-hmm. good. You're just kind of like bopping along and then, yeah, someone gets shot. But yeah. I'm not- <laughs> <laughs> like, other than that. Drama. But, yeah. but those are the good ones where you get drawn in you're like oh my god look at this amazing live like yeah, oh my god yeah. she's so cool and then it gets real talking about the underworld i feel like Ooh. you had a story to share with us about fashion week oh my god yes i absolutely this catwalk feels a little bit i'm obsessed i underworld. honestly i watched it like three times i think i just i oh i'm just so in love it's the maison margella um show by john galliano um and this is as part of Paris Fashion Week. Yes, Paris Couture. Couture. Paris Couture. Yeah. Um, it's Couture Week. And so far, I mean, you know, Couture Week is always fun and great and lovely outfits, but like they put like this theatrical show on that's like, I feel like is going to make history. And then it goes into this like short movie that's like really like gritty, like in these like dark streets, there's a jewelry theft. There's these like, corset scenes of someone really pulling in a corset like it just makes you feel a little bit like funny and then the show opens so some people are sitting outside under the bridge in like little cafe chairs so it's like they're like sitting in a cafe watching and then it goes inside so the catwalk starts outside and then goes inside I think from what I could tell and the show starts and the first guy comes out it, the show was opened by Leon Dam. Leon Dame, I think, because he's German. He's from Berlin. Um, I'm actually a fan of him. <laughs> <laughs> I met him once and I was like... Oh. Um, so he, is he a model? Yeah, he's a model. Right. Um, so he opens the show, but he's like wearing this like corset that's so tight. Like his, like, his, his waist was so tiny. Eesh. And then he doesn't just walk the catwalk, right? He comes out and it's like really weird. He's like staring at people, you know, like he looks around and he's proper like staring at them like leaning towards people and he puts on this whole show and then every single person that comes out afterwards is doing like a similar thing and yeah, in and between all. there were these like men that wear these like coats that all like tight and they're just like kind of peeking around like you feel really freaked out and obviously the makeup by um pat mcgrath is like absolutely insane i actually watched a lot of tiktoks on how it was done i saw these yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was viral. Also, yeah. like insane. makeup was insane like i don't yeah. think there's been makeup on yeah. a catwalk like that for I mean, so many years yeah um, in- incredible yeah. wasn't it like the the whole whole it was like glazed yeah. almost yeah. like the makeup and then they like this massive glaze over the top and people were trying to like recreate what that actually was and yeah. they find out what they i think it was a but the oh, last one I saw was a, a jelly face mask that was thinned with water and then put on. But I don't know whether that's uh, oh, okay. the actual right. yeah. outcome. But yeah, it, it was just there. And, you know, the diversity within it as well, the different sizes, yeah, the like mm-hmm. everything, mm-hmm. like the, the shapes, the like almost like, yeah, just the daringness of it. Like, you know, they like he just like really went for it and it yeah. just, oh. It was like watching theatre, like yeah. it was so beautiful and I could not stop watching the models and I wanted to know how were they trained to do that because it was like proper acting. Yeah. They were like, they were making people uncomfortable the way they like, you know, leaned over to them. Like, oh, I don't know. I just, wow. Wow. Yeah. imagine being in the audience. I know. I, know. Ooh, I wish, I wish. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently Buzz Lorman was in the audience and he was like amazed by it. Mm-hmm. And it yeah. kind of makes sense. So happy yeah. 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 um, If you can impress him, yeah. then you're doing well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and the photographers were like bravoing him, you know, like insane. Like, it's just mm-hmm. like putting such like 
show on as a yeah. fashion show that's like what I when I watch fashion shows I'm like I'm always like please can someone make something like really over the top yeah yeah that's what it was yeah, yeah. so memorable yes. wow so good. At, the, at the other end of the scale though, I, feel. <laughs> I know <laughs> you have it's something still, to tell us about yeah well it's still kind of Paris couture fashion week but this is Kelly Rutherford Queen. who uh, I am just loved her since Gossip Girl oh because yeah Obviously, Gossip Girl was just great back mm-hmm. in the day. Um, but yeah, she's coming back and having a real moment and a real fashion moment, I should say. And what I love is she proves that style and fashion is just completely ageless and timeless. And she's sitting front row at all of these amazing couture shows. Um, I loved her style at the Dior show. She just looked really, really ladylike and mm. just well put together. And that's my favourite type of style. Mm-hmm. You just know that someone's... She's like all in white. All in cream. Yeah, cream. it was all cream. Yeah, just and so like head elegant. to toe. Just really, really elegant. Like, I absolutely loved it. And then, yeah, I love that everyone, there's a whole new generation discovering her on kind of like Instagram and TikTok mm-hmm. because she's doing these great lift selfies, which... It's God, just yes. the simplest so thing to do. Um, but everyone's like, oh my God, she looks amazing. And I'm like, You know yeah. she came in the office last year? No. Oh my God, yeah. did she? Yeah. Was she? Yeah. 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 Oh, she was show? Did she do a show? And the, she was on mm. the show and then she also, she was like on our floor. She oh, the office. Yeah. She had yeah. a couple of dogs with her, didn't she? <laughs> yes, I remember. That was a big day. <laughs> it was a that, big that day. That was a big day. day. Yeah, that yes, is a big yes, day in the office. <laughs> That yeah, that's like, mm. she's like Serena's mum. Like, that's yeah, huge. And she looked <laughs> flawless when she came yeah. in. Yeah. I mean, she was so elegant. I think she was in trousers, wasn't she? she I don't think I actually saw her. I just heard the I buzz. Yeah, and I was like, <laughs> it's the day. <laughs> it's the day. It's the day. It's the day. It's happening. She just was like, oh. But do you think so it's like, beautiful? Like, mm. yeah. Lily coming to life. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. When I yeah, see yeah, her, the show yeah. well, it's like, to me, like, it's her she is gossip girl. Like, it's like, she goes to these shows and, I forget that she's a different person. Yeah, like, yeah, she's, yeah. Uh, to me, it's just like, oh, there's Serena's mom at the fashion show. <laughs> <Yeah. track." laughs> I'm like, whoa, 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 no, this is real life. Yeah, this is Kelly. <laughs> um, no, she looks amazing. I just, mm. yeah, I love how I hope that I'm still as stylish when I'm that age. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah, she's um, so cool. I'm yeah. sure you will. <laughs> I can say with confidence that you'll be fine. You will be all right. <laughs> if you doubt, we'll always just go back to her Instagram account for some yeah. fashion inspiration. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stay with fashion. That leads us on nicely to some questions that we've had sent in for the podcast. So, with Kelly at the front of our minds, one is what three words would you each use to describe your style? Nana, um, I feel like we need a dictionary. Yeah, <laughs> three I know. words. No. Three words. No, I always because I actually get asked this a lot. Um, I always say colourful, vibrant, um, and polished. Nice. nice. Really yeah, well. that's, that's really spot good. Bang on. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Vanessa. Oh. I was hoping you would just. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard, isn't it? It's really it's hard. It's really hard, especially when you're not like. Like I'm quite like I change my mind every every five minutes and then yeah. I and I'm not like obviously not like fully into the fashion world like I like to like dress the way I dress but like it's it's not something you know I consider that much mm-hmm. I did think mm-hmm. to myself as a, as you were talking I was like God like what are you like when I look at myself right now I'd probably go like preppy boyfriend with an edge do you know what yeah, I mean yeah. Like, yeah yeah I don't know it's your how style. else to like. I don't know. I don't know what, mm. what 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 like would describe it. I feel like it's quite like messy. Messy is probably a good one. <laughs> yeah. Messy. Messy chic. No, but there's that like trend. Messy it's chic. like the I read it on the LuxGen um, platform, the eclectic grandpa, yeah. which is more yeah. like what you're wearing now. Like the yeah. um, what is this? Yeah. It's like a uh, knitted sweater vest. Knitted sweater. Thank you. The fashion <laughs> fashion girl. Yeah, knitted sweater vest. Exactly. Yeah. It's cool. But yeah, still still finding uh, my mm. words. <laughs> I'm I'll be the eclectic grandpa. That's, uh, there you go. That's my word. Mm. Very good. Georgina, you know, I feel like you're very classic. Ah. I, I think fair to say. Actually, yeah. no, do your own three words. Yeah. I'll give you your words. Well, I actually did think classic, maybe, but mm. then is that also classic slash boring? Mm. I don't no, know. No, 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 no. Uh, definitely not. Age appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't know how to describe my style, but you know, 
it's I think it's really difficult when you're not actually a fashion person yeah yeah to to feel actually, like but yeah. it's something you're really holding on to yeah because I probably have I could do my interior style but maybe not my fashion style so yeah, mm. yeah I'll go I'll classic I'll take that yeah we can timeless that. <laughs> um another fashion question what fashionable boots do I wear in the rain mm. oh fashionable boots in the rain um you could go for something with a kitten heel so let's like cut out the danger of <laughs> wearing a super high heel and possibly slipping up in the rain um and then uh, i would obviously say something leather or painting um these boots for example that i've got on they've essentially got a kitten heel they are from um arquette um mango i've got some really good ones in at the moment um so yeah they would be go to what about like a chunky Chelsea boot or something if it's raining? Yeah, you could do that as well. I think it's because I'm like, I never go there because I don't wear flat shoes. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, you could also do um, a Chelsea boot or kind of like the Balenciaga style boots that are um, still really, really popular mm. as well. Um, and then, yeah, you've got comfort on your side as well. Okay, one more fashion question. Yeah. What's your sherry style? What's Ooh. your go-to oh, everyday yes. outfit when you don't have time to think? Mm, if I'm not at work, probably like a dungaree. Anything you can put in like all in one, or like an all in one piece, like a one. What I call one stop dressing. Thank which you. I'm a massive fan of. It's basically just one piece. Yeah. Yeah. So i.e. a dress and boots yep. and then you're done yeah like mm-hmm. rather than having to think of putting lots of different pieces together mm-hmm. yeah because i exactly feel like that. i used to be quite into i know you've got a few jumpsuits and i like mm. a jumpsuit and sometimes mm. actually having these kind of cohorts knitted cohorts or whatever feel like they do the same job yeah mm-hmm. because you know obviously you're gonna wear them together mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Sorted. <laughs> yeah <exactly. laughs> but also i feel like if you just wear like a pair of loose trousers and a jumper for me it's or like a, a blazer you know so you look kind of cool but yeah. without like having to actually think a lot about it mm, yeah, yeah. Mm, definitely hotel stays in the uk for march oh i mean that's very very broad yeah it depends what you want I mean, because of the traitors, I feel like Scotland is very much trending right now. You know, I've never been to Scotland. Neither have I. I've only been to Edinburgh, but I really want to like the Highlands, yeah. or, like, the proper experience. Yeah. yeah. It looks, yeah, I'd mm-hmm. like to go because of that as well. Me too. I feel like the Cotswolds, you can't really go wrong. Yeah, Double Red Duke yeah. is a really lovely, it's actually a pub with rooms, but it's kind of like that Soho House vibe without, Those well, prices. obviously the membership, the prices, yeah. and the food is really mm-hmm. great as well. What's yeah. it called here, sorry? Um, Double Red Duke. Oh. Yeah, it's a really lovely hotel. Oh, really, that one really, down. I really want to go to Estelle Manor, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Like that's like, that is like, that is like top, top, top tier. Yeah. I keep getting ads on it on, on Instagram. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, yeah. don't tease me. <laughs> yeah, if you want to go top luxury, that top is I mean, yeah, it's, it's a bit, yeah, it's a bit more yeah, on the But like, it's so beautiful. I'd add to, um, to that maybe... Is it the Signet Collection that has mm-hmm. the retreat at Elkhart Park? Oh, yes. And yeah. the Mitre at Hampton Court. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. if you want a hotel that's, I think, feels luxurious, but it's a slight price point below some of those mm. typical five-star hotels, mm-hmm. they often have a bit of a spa offering as well. Mm, I yeah. know that the retreat does. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would pitch in with that one. We've also got some questions from the community as well. So somebody is looking to remove the detritus of over 20 years of living in the same family home. They're basically looking for um, places to sell furniture and decent crockery cookware. So any platforms, Uh, any um, ideas for selling? Facebook marketplace. Mm. I think it depends on what type of money you want for the yeah. items. Yeah. So like those places you're probably not gonna get like too much. It's just if you want to get rid of it and get yeah. some like extra change. But if obviously it was really kind of high end, really great pieces. If you wanna sell something that has value yeah. and you wanna get the right price for it, you probably probably best off looking for ebay and doing this is what i was gonna say i'm a big ebay fan because the problem with marketplace i find is that like it has to be someone near you to pick it up whereas sometimes with ebay you can actually i mean depends on the size of it yeah yeah, you can post it i mean obviously with big furniture stuff it doesn't Mm -hmm. make sense but like yeah yeah, ebay i feel like it's my trusted go-to for 
It is still really good for that, isn't it? Yeah. And then also Nachi, it's an app for selling vintage yeah. furniture. Um, so you can sell on there. And I actually sold a sofa um, a few months ago on Nextdoor. So Nextdoor oh, okay. is a community Ooh, app. That's cool. Yeah. And it, yeah, it weirdly went on there. And that's yeah. fine. So I, I listed it on Gumtree, Olio, yeah. and Nextdoor. Mm-hmm. And it went on Nextdoor. So next mm. next that's, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. Did you ever write that down? Any advice on how to style cropped wide leg trousers and jeans in winter? I need to cover my ankles because it's so cold. Oh, good question. My first thought is read the feature on red socks that we did. (laughs) Yeah. And just wear red socks. (laughs) Yeah, just wear red socks all the time. You'll be absolutely fine. Definitely a sock is like a good way to go with kind of like any shoes or trainers. But a wide leg trouser, also boots. I love it when kind of the boot, Mm. you've got a kind of cut off there. And then you just see a little bit of boot peeking out um, underneath. So definitely boots. And then just a big kind of like oversized jumper, little French tuck. Good to go. Nice. Ew. French tuck lover. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, somebody who would like to take young teens to France this summer. Any suggestions for great areas which have a nice beach and shops? And a few teen hangouts, somewhere smallish. Could be a campsite or I might rent a villa. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's, Ooh, that's, that's a lot of, yeah, that's mm. very specific. That's a lot of tick boxes. Yeah. yeah. I'd like to jump in on that one. Yes. Oh, because go I on. do go to the South of France a lot. And I would say Cavalier or Joanne Le Pain or even Saint Tropez, which I know is very, has a reputation for being very glitzy, but actually there are lots of campsites um, around there. Some of them are even right on the beach. So definitely worth checking out and mm. lots of teen fun to be had. Oh, I mean, the nice. Yeah, I've yeah. mm. never known that, but I've been to saint but obviously just seen the other side of it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you've seen the just for the glam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, There's two yeah. sides of the coin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll remember that one for uh, later <laughs> you on your life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the thing with, with South of France is, like, there's, like, for example, Joan Le Pont, like you said, like, it's so well connected around there like you could just stay there somewhere and there's like literally buses going all along from Monaco all the way up to Cannes so like you can like go back and forth because there's I find there's a lot of like really cute little beaches that especially for kids are really fun I mean I was an adult when I went there but I still did like (laughs) we would like climb through the sides you know get to like the little hidden bit I think it was Villefranche that has like that really fun beach it's like 20 minutes from Jean Le Pont yeah um so yeah, like that's my, my first thought when went like can for shops, you know, it's yeah. on the other side. Yeah. Like you have a lot of fun, fun things to look at. Big Sephora. Yeah. I, <laughs> I feel like teenagers will love that. Yeah. True. True. Yeah. True. I would say also maybe like turn it into a bit of a touring holiday because yeah. actually it's such a varied area that you might as well explore it a bit. Mm. And I think also if you've got teens who want a bit of variety and yeah. you might think they're going to love one place and they actually they're looking for something else and if you yeah. can kind of move every few days and you can have a really good um like a good couple of weeks down there so yeah, yeah. do a road trip yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 i know oh Speaking give me two like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, go. Go. Oh, we can all sit back and dream of warmer days yeah. come have a little um, Sherlock's outing today. yeah <laughs> Right? <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, we'll get a boat. <laughs> that reader, we will um, we'll do a recce for you and we'll come back with yeah. uh, our personal we're, recommendations. We are committed. Yeah. Yeah. Very committed. We are. Oh, right, I think we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for listening. If you have any feedback, please email podcast at sherlux.com. You can also look out for our question box on Instagram each week or ask your questions on the SL community at community.sherlux.com. And please don't forget to rate, review, subscribe and tell your friends. We'll see you next time.